everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun trifold card. I actually made this during my last Facebook Live using a brand new stamp set from Creative Stamping Magazine, which I'll show you in a moment. I just love all these stamped images and I've built them all up to form this little cluster on the front there. And then you've got all this room on this side as well. And then you've got that section there, which I'm going to have to write my message. And I've got my sentiment there. You're not old, you're vintage with the British Bulldog. We're on, on the cushion there which I think is brilliant and there's also the teapot and the teacup there and you've got the crown you could also have the back to write your message if you wanted to do something else here as well um, if you want to see that Facebook live I'll share the link below because we talk about lots of things we have a bit you know a good laugh in the group there and I also give you other ideas on how you can evolve this card shape and make it into more of a showstopper a bit of a mantle pleaser card as well finished off with some no um, novo some nouveau drops and you'll see there I've got glossy accents on all of the elements that would be plastic or metal in real life so the medals there the propellers and just the dial there and also the metal kind of flagpole there as well so it's a really fun card folds down to nine um five by seven and it will fit into a box envelope or one of those bouncy envelopes that i like to make so let me show you how to make it Okay, so this is the stamp set it's issue 84 and it's brand new and this is that amazing large a4 stamp set so you get 33 stamps there and they're just wonderful really really nice you can just make them all out there you've got that great big spitfire plane you've got the land girl you've got your street lights there and the double decker bus the black cab the phone the bulldog the telephone box and i'm going to be using those other images in this card today so across those two cards by the end of this video i would have used all of the stamps i think apart from this one here and obviously the sentiments because they will change depending on the card I'm making but yeah this one here so I may add that one in as well at some point but uh, yeah it's really really lovely and it's currently on offer at Craft Stash and it's all linked below for you. You also get this stencil here which I have used and I'll show you that one in a moment. So I've gone ahead and done it and I actually already have this one done and I shared this one at the beginning of the Facebook Live just so people could see what it was that we were going to make. So I'm going to actually use this one now for the tutorial and what I've done is I've made a template up and I'm going to talk you through the template and show you this one and then you'll be able to make yours. So I've got my mats and layers, I've coloured and done all of the stamping. Again if you want to see some of the stamping and colouring check out the Facebook Live Live and join in there you don't have to craft long you could just sit back and watch in the background but it is really fun so to make this card you need two pieces of cardstock and you need one piece that is 10 by 7 now if you would prefer to take a screenshot now and you're comfortable you know comfortable doing all that then you can just carry on because it's, it's pretty straightforward but what you want to do is along the 10 inch side is you want to score first of all I put a little marker at two and a half and seven and a half and just scored all the way down at five and a half and then I flipped the cardstock and again I done a little marker at two and a half and at seven and a half and then flip it back and then if you grab your ruler what I find easy is if you lay it down on that two and a half marker and just score down to two inches on your ruler and then if you want just come up from the bottom two inches so just come up to five and then come along here again with your ruler and just score down two inches and score up two inches because the black lines are the score lines, the red are the cut lines. So the only score line you're doing all the way through is the one at five inches, so that's that one. But this here, you've got to make sure that you don't score here or here, because that's what gives you this nice, you know, piece on the front and obviously there as well. Then to cut it, you just want to join up the bottoms of those two score lines, so these black lines. So I just use my metal ruler and just cut right the way down move your ruler down and then again cut all the way down and that will give you ignore this piece but it will give you that there so if I just sit this next to here you can see if I do it this way instead so here 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 and here are these ones here okay and then this one is this one all the way down here. I'm looking through my monitor and trying to make sure my finger's in the right place as well, it looks a bit odd. And then you can see the cut lines there, which will give you this, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. Then what you need, I'll talk about the folding and burnishing in a moment. This piece here, which is five and a half by seven, and you're just scoring at half an inch along that five and a half inch side, okay? You are then going to fold and burnish that one 
add your glue and you're going to stick it there. So you have that one long piece. You see they're exactly the same size. What you want to then do, so it would be yours would be flat like that, is you want to start off with these two, so they're mountain folds, and this will naturally start to, you know, kind of pop up. So keep that as a mountain fold, but the two in the middle, so this is that five inch score line, so this one here, these pieces may, need to be valleys, and this is your mountain. And then you're back again. So you can see there you've got one, two, three mountains. Well, actually you've got five mountains, but you know what I mean. You've got one, two, three, and then you've got your valley there. And then this piece, when you stick it on, that also needs to become a valley. So hopefully by seeing this template that I'd already done, I just didn't want to waste it. And I, you know, right now I don't need to make another one on top of the one I've already made. But along with that, which I will take photos of and put on my blog, hopefully that will, you know, make a lot of sense for you. So I'm going to pop all that to one side. And now we just need to do our mats and our layers. So what you will need is three pieces, but it's up to you if you want to do three or not. And I've already cut this one here, but I've got here three pieces. Now I'm only on this one because I'm starting with white card. I'm actually only having one matte layer. Whereas on the one I made here, because I started on a coloured card stock, I done a white matte layer and then a pattern paper. I'll put the measurements to that one in my blog or you can watch my Facebook live as well because I did cut into it a little bit and change it ever so slightly. But these ones here, are exactly the size that you need if you just want to do that one layer anyway. So three pieces that are four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Okay, this is this last piece here where I've used that stencil. So just on the corner there, I just stenciled that kind of just the, that left hand side of the Union Jack. I think it looks really good. Now this card I've just stamped hello and it's just going to say best of British on the front and I'm just going to use it to send to people outside of the UK. So just some of my crafty friends in other countries, I think it's a nice card to send. So that one there is going to stick in the back or on that last panel and you'll see you've got that nice border. And then these two are going to be for here. So you'll see here I've already got this one which will go in there with that nice border. Okay. Now the pieces you cut out of here keep and you're going to cut them down and they will then become your matte layers for these ones here. So there's no waste. So to get this shape, I've got my pattern paper here. Now you want to do one this way and then once you've got it cut, so you know, just pretend this is your, your first one you've done. When you've done that, if you put the pattern to pattern and then just trace around there and then cut those pieces out, you will have both of your pieces in the correct you know, way because one's obviously being stuck that way and one's going to be that way. First of all, to get this, you will need to, so I'll do it on this one, flip it over because it's best to do your pencil marks on the back you're not going to see any of it and it saves you rubbing it out. So you will need to come in two and a half inches. So I'm going to put pencil mark two and a half inches there and then another one at two and a half inches down here. Okay. And then just draw a pencil, just draw, joining that line up. Okay, and then you want to come down two inches. So on this left hand side here, coming down, oh, make sure you've got it perfectly lined up. There we go. So two, and then I'm just going to come up here two inches. And then I'm just going to use my grid to make sure I keep everything lined up and my ruler's nice and straight. Then you're just going to bring that marker and join it with that pencil line there and again make sure it's nice and straight like so. Now you're going to remove the rectangles there, these ones. Okay then you flip it over and you'll have that and then you want to put that so it's pattern to pattern on the next piece and then you'll get your two pieces exactly the same. So now I have that to stick there and there. I've got those two to go in there and then these two you just want to cut down. So it is two and a quarter by one and three quarters. So I'm just going to trim then. You're just taking a little quarter of an inch off of each side. So one and three quarters by two and a quarter. And again, okay, like so. So I'm now going to get that all stuck down. If you want to do the same size that I've got here, I've got a red piece, which is four 
by 6 and then the white piece is 3 and 3 quarters by 5 and 3 quarters. Again, all of those measurements will be listed on my blog, but I'm now just going to go ahead and get all of this all stuck down. Okay, so that's that all now stuck down. You see it all folds nicely there. I'm not too worried that the hello pokes out the top there because I'm going to layer it up now. I'll just bring this one back in again just so you can kind of see what I want to create. So I've got all my pieces here and I just want to start building a little scene. So I'm going to bring in the bulldog on the front of this one and he does have a little hat that you can put on him here. It's very, very sweet. So I've just a little bit of glue on the back of the hat there and you can just sit it right on top of his head. I think he's adorable. You can see the two colours as well. I done him in brown on that one and then in grey on this one just so you can just see a little bit of a difference. Um, so I'm going to have something like that and then I think I want the double decker bus there. I've got to have the flag up here. So you see now that covers my... Um, you know anything that you may have had there and I like that that Union Jack kind of pokes out as well then I think I'm going to have that inside and then I'm going to have the teapot just changing up a little bit on the front of this because it's proud to be British these are all like the things that we love <laughs> so got a nice strong tea there and then I'm going to have something like that I kind of want it all a bit yeah, something like that. And then these pieces, so I could have put the crown on him actually. Oh, I wonder if that's dried. Let me just, because it does grab, oh no, I reckon I can get away with that. I'm just thinking, oh, he looks really good with the crown. I didn't think about that. Let's, um, yeah, let's just reapply that glue. Just pop that on there. Oh yeah, I definitely like that. <laughs> he looks really good. So I'm going to have all that on the front and then these pieces, maybe even the top hat I can have in there somewhere, will be in you know the inside part. So I'm just going to speed this up and get those stuck down. I'm going to use foam pads as well, just because I like to give it a little bit more dimension. There's the card finish so I went for that kind of layout on the front which I really like and you can also just put a little bit of like a shape to your flag like that you just kind of curve it a little bit you can see there I've done that just giving it lots of dimension now I've already also added Nuva drops some twine on that one I may add those onto this one I might put some but because it's polka dots sometimes it might not work so well on a polka dot paper. I've got a few yellow ones so you might see them later on in photos and then when you open it up I've gone for a little grouping down here with the street light, the other kind of bowl hat there, bowler hat and the taxi and then I've put the telephone there with hello because I think that kind of works quite well together but I really like it. You've just got so much space on this so you can really create some really nice scenes but um, I'm yeah super pleased with these. Also I forgot to mention you might want to burnish your score lines but you can do that even when the cards are all finished. So I'm just going in there because you can see it's got quite a bounce to it so if I just go in there and do those there we go much better. They will fit into those box envelopes I'll link them as well because I know a lot of you use those they're really handy but I absolutely adore these. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I hope it's inspired you and you're able to get that stamp set because I know during the live there was lots of people that wanted to get their hands on it. So I'm very pleased I've got it and I will definitely be using it in the future. So thanks for watching. As always, please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and I'll be back very, very soon with another video. See you later. Bye.